Hey, so welcome back. Today we're having a quick tips episode and we're going to talk about crown rot because a few weeks ago I was here and looking at my rhubarb and I thought, hmm, you should be doing something by now. It is my later cropping variety of rhubarb. So whereas the timpani early has stems a lot earlier, this one starts a bit later on. But I know that by April I should at least be harvesting a few stems and it wasn't showing any signs of life. So I thought something is definitely up here. So I looked around the crown and nothing. So I decided to dig it out of the ground. And that's when I noticed I had crown rot and my heart broke a little bit because this rhubarb plant is one of the first plants I ever put here on the allotment. It was given to me as a division from somebody I used to work with a long time ago and it's died <laughs> and um, it died from crown rot. So what is crown rot? Well it's a disease that is caused by a soil borne fungus that lives in the soil and it can go undisturbed until one day it pops up and attacks your plants and it, it is detrimental because it can attack a plant and kill it so quickly before you even notice that something is wrong and there's not a lot you can do um, except for prevent it as best you can and stop it from spreading as best you can. So it's attached to my rhubarb but it also has a number of um, host plants that are really susceptible to it as well. Things such as roses but also trees, vegetables and herbaceous perennials and even some bulbs as well can suffer from crown rot so it's not just rhubarb that's affected but I thought I'd talk about it today just so you've got a heads up um, and we'll talk about how you can prevent it from happening on your plot. So what are the symptoms? Well I noticed last year it was sort of late spring going into summer that the rhubarb plant it was a bit lacklustre it didn't have much vigour and some of the leaves were a bit limp they looked a little bit sickly and some of them were really discoloured and at the time I just thought that was environmental down to the weather and didn't really pass it off as anything else really until now when it didn't come back to life it's kind of you know trapped my um, memory of what it was like last year so yeah limp looking leaves discoloration in the leaves um, is one of the symptoms um, but yes when you lift the crown if it's all brown and chocolatey and sticky and rotten that's when you know you've got crown rot so if you discover it what should you do well the first thing is the cleanliness of your tools your working environment Be, bear in mind that that disease is in the soil and wherever that soil goes it can spread but your main priority is to get it out of the ground and destroy it away from the allotment away from your garden not in your compost bin you know take it home bag it bin it get rid because you don't want that soil touching any other areas of your allotment you've also got to be really careful of things like your boots and your tools i would dip my tools and clean them in a bleach solution to make sure that after i'm working i'm not going to spread that to any other areas of my allotment so once you've dug it out of the ground you want to get rid of all the other debris any of the stems or bits and pieces that might be in the soil and now I'm faced with a small project of digging out a lot of this soil and then replacing it. It sounds a bit extra, I know, but whatever I plant in here now could also be affected by the uh, fungus and I don't want it to spread to my apple tree or the healthy rhubarb plants that I still have surviving here. So yes, I now need to dig out a lot of this soil and then replace it with fresh bought in topsoil. So how can we prevent it from happening in the first place? And prevention is absolutely key. And I think I actually know where I went a little bit wrong last year. We had a really hot, dry spell and I hadn't watered my rhubarb for a while. So I put the hose on it and I went and did a little, a few other jobs and I actually forgot that I left the hose on it. So it's my own fault. I think I drowned it. And then that's wet soil condition is what's, you know, really sort of helped that fungus thrive basically so the, the fungus actually thrives in really boggy wet conditions so if you can incorporate um, organic matter into the soil and make it a bit more free draining that'll help prevent it 
Also, you want to avoid waterlogging it, so don't overwater your plants like I did. And also, when you're mulching them, don't put the mulch on top of the crown or too close to the crown. Just put it around the surrounding areas so that you're not going to rot the crown of the plant. Now, once I've actually replaced the soil over here, I've got to be really careful what I plant next. I've got here a uh, David Austin rose that I've been looking forward to planting and finding a spot for. And I thought, oh, that could be just the spot for my rose. But it turns out that the rose is a top host um, of the fungus and you can get crown rot very easily on roses. So I'm not going to put this here. That would be a very bad decision. I've just got to be careful what I do put in there. But I found on the RHS they've got a website and they've got a list of all the plants that are um, perhaps a little bit more resistant to crown rot and it also lists those that are really susceptible to crown rot. So I won't be planting the rose here, um, I'll find somewhere else for it. And this is the rhubarb here in the bucket. And as I say, I've just got to be really careful now um, how I handle and move it, but I will be taking it home and putting it in the bin there. So I hope that's given you a few pointers on how to prevent and look out for crown rot. But yeah, prevention is key. Don't mulch too close, don't overwater, and just keep a real close eye on what your soil conditions are like and don't leave the hose on. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.